friends I am finally going to do my Maverick list graphic novels that I promised back in November and now I finally can speak again <coughs> so I'm gonna go through the, um, the graphic novels that I nominated for the Texas Maverick graphic novel reading list of 2020 these are not all of the ones that I nominated hold on actually they're one two three eight there are eight of my nine or ten I don't remember um, nominations but I'm gonna go through the ones that I have in print because these are amazing okay so when you're on the Texas Maverick graphic novel reading list committee you get nine nominations um, for a period of between January 1st and September 30th within those nine nominations you have to have one superhero one manga and one um, non-fiction graphic novel in there and um, the rest of them can be repeats it can be um, another superhero another manga another um, non-fiction or just a bunch of general ones that you think are amazing but as long as you have those three you're good now I love 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 graphic novels I love 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 my committee um, there is one member who tries to do all manga and that's really cool there is one member who loves horror and that's also really cool but being on this committee has truly opened my eyes to graphic novels and how they are truly more than books they are art forms they're beautiful they teach us so so much um i can go on and on but i love 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 them so i'm gonna start with number one i don't have this one um with me because i read it as an ebook on the marvel app if you don't know it is Riri Williams, um, Ironheart, and it was her first official um, graphic novel where she is not Iron Man, Ironheart, Riri Williams, something, something. This is just Ironheart Volume 1, um, and it was her first one. And I love Riri Williams. If you don't know already, Riri is um, a little bit autistic superhero. She's kind of the next Iron Man. She has pink armor. She's African-American. She has a little bit of PTSD because she saw her best friend and her father killed um by gunshots and her best friend was killed by a stray gunshot um she is amazing she's just awesome but she's also a teenager and she also makes mistakes and that is why i love her so that was my one nomination i'm not going to tell you which ones got on and didn't get on the list because you can go see that um the list is out it's been out since december 3rd december 1st i don't know first monday of december um and you can go see that for yourself so Next book, this was my manga nomination and it is Breath of Flowers. I love it because it's so, so sweet. It's about a, um, it's not really um, a LGBT book, but it's about a girl who dresses as a boy because she loves basketball, but she can't be on a really good basketball team because she's a girl. But then the, a girl starts to like her when she thinks that the other one is a boy. So it's kind of, it's not trans because she's not per saying she's a boy. She doesn't want to be a boy. She's dressing this way so that she can play basketball. And then the other girl thinks she's a boy until she realizes she's not. So it's that. But it's so, so cute. Um, if you know me um, unprofessionally, you know I'm not... I don't read a lot of manga because I'm not as far in as I would like to be and I'm not very as familiar as I would like to be with it. This is one of my favorite mangas now because it's so, so sweet. I loved it. My next one, this I got at the Scholastic Reading Summit last summer um, and I loved it because I love D&D, &D, but I also love this series. This is Sunny Rolls the Dice. It's part of the Sunny series um, by Jennifer and Matthew Holm. And it is about Sunny starting middle school and finding herself and she starts playing D&D. &D, and it's so cute. D&D um, &D is Dungeons and Dragons and it's set in the 70s where they play in their friend's basement and she has to learn about growing up and like her friends tell her we don't play board games anymore and she's like what why why like why are there these rules and she has to learn about kind of growing up in that weird place in middle school where you're not quite a big kid but you're not a little kid anymore and she has to accept who she is and who her new friends are who they're not 
Next is, mm, these are all like my favorites, but this one is truly one of my favorite graphic novels like ever. And I've been promoting it around school. I love it. It is so, so cute. When I heard about it at TLA last year, I knew it was going to be amazing. And it is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. The day it came out, so when you're on the Maverick graphic novel reading list, you get graphic novels sent to you for review. I bought this one. Um, and I don't buy a lot of graphic novels anymore because I know that we're going to get a lot sent to us. And I usually wait to see what we're not getting. And then I buy the ones that I really like or that I want anyway. I bought this on the day it came out because I knew it was going to be amazing. And it is. So these two are best friends. And it is their last night and their last time working in a um, pumpkin farm. And this pumpkin farm in particular, uh, I'm probably saying it wrong, pumpkin patch, pumpkin thing it's not an orchard i know that but they work there and it's like this whole ordeal like there is food and there's rides and there's hay rides and there it's so much it's so cool it's so much more than every pumpkin patch kind of thing i've ever been to but it is beautiful uh anyway so they're best friends and the girl has decided that since it is their last night working there, they are going to get the boy to finally talk to the girl that he has a crush on. It is awesome. Um, it's so cute how she tries so hard to get the boy to talk to the girl. Um, but they have so many cool fall treats. Y'all know I am a basic girl on the inside and I love fall. But they have this thing called a pumpkin bomb, which is a slice of pumpkin pie dipped in chocolate. Sounds a freaking amazing and I need that in my life but this book is so so cute the art is absolutely gorgeous like I could just stare at it because it's just gorgeous next is one of my students favorites and that is Guts by Raina Telgemeier um, this is in part of the Raina series and I love this one because it takes a it shows a different side of anxiety and a different portrayal of what anxiety is like especially in middle school so this is our main character and she's starting middle school and she's learning about how mean girls can be and about fake friends and about how um, you think you're friends with someone and then they're not. She gets a, one of those three-way calls where they ask her if she's mad at someone. It's, it's very, very, very relatable to middle school students. And it shows how anxiety can affect your stomach and how you feel and make you actually physically sick. Next one is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, volume one, High School is Hell. This is part of the reboot, not necessarily a reboot, um, this, I guess it's kind of a reboot of the original Buffy graphic novels. If you haven't read them, they're kind of terrible, um, but you should. Anyway, I love Buffy. I grew up with Buffy, so super excited about this one. Um, it is, as you can see, based on the Sarah Michelle Gellar character, um, the characters look almost exactly like Willow and Xander from the TV show. And it's just awesome. It shows you a different side to the story that we grew up with on the TV show. And it's different because it's not the same story. So where we think one thing happened because we watched the show, it's not the same. Next is Hunters. This is um, an anthology kind of graphic novel. It's different artists who wrote different short stories within the same kind of general plot line. It's about these hunters who have to save their kingdom by going to an island that's going to have something that saves their king. Really cool. All different kinds of art. Another one is FTL, Tales from the Age of the $200 Warp Drive. It's definitely a sci-fi futuristic. It's another anthology with so many different styles of art. It's it's really cool. There's definitely something in it for everyone. Um, but it's about what happens when they put how to make a warp drive online and it's cheap to build it. And so people start just space traveling. It's crazy. And the last one that I have for y'all today is The Iliad as a graphic novel adapted by Gareth Hines. There is a new Gareth Hines adaptation coming out soon. Um, and it is going to be on a book that everyone I know loves that I have not read yet. So I can't wait to read that one. This is um, just as long as the Iliad. But I feel like it's more accessible to kids because of the art in it. 
and um, I have it in my middle school library and my kids are actually reading it. I don't know if they're understanding it, but I, it's getting checked out a lot because the art is so, so cool. Oh, and then another one that I nominated was the manga classics, Dracula. I love Dracula and I love the manga classic series because they make those classic stories accessible to I me. Mean, my middle school kids read them and they love them. So if my kids can read them, I like anything that takes something that I feel is inaccessible as the original version and make it accessible to students. So yeah, those are my Maverick nominations. And I hope you go and see the list and check it out and find some awesome graphic novels for you. Bye!